Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here. It is May 15th, 2022. It is Sunday afternoon at 4.04 p.m. Big question everybody's wanting to know is, how am I doing? I'm doing very well. Um, I have to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I have had so many of you text me, message me, write to me, and I want to thank you all. I haven't replied yet. With I've been digesting and, um, you know, coming to terms with stuff, but I will. I will. I need to sit down and do that, and I certainly will. And um, But I have read them all, and I am amazed at the outpouring of love and care. You guys sharing some personal stories with me. Come to find out I'm not that alone in, in what happened. And um, I just am amazed. So many of you guys are my family, my chosen family. And I am proud of that. I am proud of, you know, having such a wonderful network and family and stuff. Um, you know, I'm doing I'm doing well. Um, Friday was really rough. Friday night was was rough. When I get to the point that I'm getting upset and I can't sleep, then I call and Brad comes to my room and um, he'll sit and talk to me for a while and I don't know it's kind of like my safe spot and then I can go to sleep and I had to do that this morning too because I hadn't been asleep and it was past 7 a.m. and I knew I had to get some sleep so um, uh, I've been very very grateful for him and his love and care you know, um, he's been there as much as I want him to be there, and then there's times that I need to be alone, and I'll say, like, Friday, I don't know, what time was it Friday I said I needed to be alone for a bit? I don't remember. Was it in the evening, I think, yeah. so? Um, and I did, I needed to be alone for a bit, so I could kind of work through some emotions, I just was kind of numb, I didn't want to talk to anybody, um, I just, I, I couldn't even just kind of bring it together where I could, and, um, you know, in the midst of all that, Brad had gotten his disability pay, so we needed to pay bills. So, Friday, with all of that going on, we're paying bills and stuff, and, um, you know, ordering some supplies. Predictions are that grain prices are going to go up so insanely high by, you know, in fall. So, because that's what we do, we've been trying to, I haven't, we haven't talked about a mass amount of food for us. Because, come on, let's face it, you know, I'm not too overly concerned. We did stock up last month. But, you know, if we had to restrict even harder for a while, we could be okay, <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest. But with with our babies, the pets, that's another story. So I did go ahead and buy two more big 48-pound bags of the Prina. Uh, the Prina Complete Adult with Real Chicken. Um, they love it. I think it's the same stuff they were we were getting through Prina 1. Um, and they just, they, they do, they just love it. 48 pounds fits perfectly in our two bins that we have with lids. Um, so I got two more bags of that. I did get, I, I bought six more cases of the pedigree, um, chopped dinner, which is basically your loaf. Um, and for some reason, Walmart upped it by two. I don't know if we paid for those two or not. Oh, I'm sure we did. I'm sure we did. So now we have, you know, we have right now, realistically, about, we know we have a good three months solid of pet food. I also bought two more boxes of pouches. We could stretch it out to four months. Uh, the only thing we'd be a little short of would be the pouches. Um, but, you know, you can easily supplement that. 
So I didn't worry about their treats or anything right now because I didn't anything they have to have to have. I mean, they still have some. Um, you know, I was mainly concerned with getting stuff. I did not buy any more cat food yet. She seems to be doing fine. I mean, she is just so thin, but she's eating really well. She she not did not touch whoever bought that dry cat food. And it looks like a really good quality cat food, but she's not eating any dry right now. So, um, but the canned, the canned salmon, and we'll go through that pretty fast, but I hesitate to buy any more right now because I mean, we just don't know how much longer she has. When she gets to the point we think she's suffering, we will take her in and have her put down, um, you know, but right now she doesn't seem to be suffering. She's still very, very loving and, and everything, so, you know, we're going to keep her as long as we can. But I'm just going to kind of buy, you know, case by case as I can find. I don't know. <clears throat> the person that sent the, the salmon, and I know I've talked to you, and I'm not sure where you got it from. Because I, I need to, I'm having trouble still finding that, the fancy feast, the salmon pate. So, um, uh and she did like the pouches, the, the liquid treat pouches. And we use that because she needs a little bit of more supplement uh, overnight. We want to make sure she has plenty. We just don't want her to be hungry or, or be suffering. And, and she really likes it, but you're right. She likes the little stick ones even better. Um, so uh, it almost kind of feels like a baby food. It kind of looks like it too, so... We just take each day we get with her and be very happy with it. So, um, you know, and then I noticed today when I was checking our account that, you know, one of the places, I don't know if it was my fault or not, I took out twice, took out for two months instead of one. So I'm going to have to wait and adjust and see what, what that all means. It's, I'm going to notify them, but I doubt they'll probably refund it. They'll probably say, oh, we'll just hang on to it for another month. Like, but I could use the money now, so, you know. I'm going to start selling some stuff on, on eBay, I think. Um, you know, I have, like, some new in, in the package, never worn bras and stuff. Because, frankly, we could use a little bit of the extra income, um, you know. This was the first month that we had the car payment to pay the increase in insurance. Um, which was even more than than I thought it was going to be because uh, they uh, paid for half a month of full coverage last month. And so that was added on to this month, <clears throat> you know. But I sure do love that vehicle, so does Brad. And I kind of like how bright the color is because, well, I like that color anyway, but nobody can say they didn't see us coming. You, you know, I mean, <laughs> and it's easy to find it in a parking lot or anything, uh, but I'm doing pretty well health-wise. My feet are getting better. They kind of hurt today because I'm very swollen, but I just didn't want to take water pills last night. I did take, have to take water pills Friday. You know, life goes on. No matter how upset you are, you still got to take care of yourself. You still have things you have to do. Like I said, I could be as upset as I was, but I still had to pay bills, you know. Well, we had to pay bills. I can't say I. Because Brad now, he, he I'll say, okay, can you go and pay this bill? Can you go and pay that bill? You know, and he does a great job on that. So we kind of sit together and do that. Um, if, is there not hamburger just real close, honey? Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. Um... So, yeah, we did that. We got a small order for, from Food Lion yesterday. We actually went and picked it up. Um, you know, just, I mean, it was just three small bags. It wasn't anything humongous or anything. I needed more bananas and uh, just a few other things we needed, like yogurt and creamer and that kind of stuff. Um, took a nice, long, hot shower last night. That sure felt good. I'm doing a little bit more self-care. 
But, you know, I almost feel like with everything that happened, you guys, I almost feel almost like healed. When you feel a certain way and it comes full circle. There's kind of this inner peace. I had a feeling something was going to happen in my life. And I had told Brad that. And I get these feelings and normally I'm right. So this was it. And also, when you now know that the way you've been made to feel within a family is so correct and so messed up, when you aren't around that and you're not in the midst of that dysfunction anymore, it is almost like a blaring alarm at you and I Friday a flood of memories came back a few good some bad ones and you know I uh I, I need to work through those but I feel I feel healed I feel you know yeah Brad and I still talk about different things but I feel very healed he'll, he'll tell you he, I'm not sitting around crying now no I, I think the last time I cried was when I was trying to make that video Friday. Yeah. I didn't even, Friday Friday night I didn't even. No. You know, I feel healed. There's nothing to cry about. It is what it is. I've known, and you don't want to have to admit to yourself even that this is how it is. You know, do I have, you know, the parental love and where they're waiting with open arms and accept me in their fold and just love me no matter what, no. No, no, no. It is what it is. I've come to find out a lot of you guys have gone through the same thing. And so that does help. I'm sorry for your pain and what you've gone through. I'm very thankful. And I want to thank you for sharing your stories and trusting me enough, um, you know. As my my uh, <clears throat> my aunt, and she was my friend, Lorendi. She was married to my uncle Calvin. Um, uh, said that sometimes family can be the cruelest, and she's so right on that. And, oh yeah. You know, Brad's done some talking with her and sharing with her because he, most of the family did not know certain things. You know, I'm not one to go and blast, so. Um, you know, but I just kind of want to let them know, you know, because nobody's saying, hey, where is she and, and stuff. Or maybe they are, but they're not, you know. Maybe they've been told things they're afraid to approach, you know. So, um, I don't know if that was the case or not. Um, but, you know, it's, I didn't do anything to warrant what was done. And all it does is reflect on them how 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 bad that is. They made their choice. That's fine, you know. <clears throat> that's fine, uh, you know. That's that's their right. So you know, you move on. I'm not part of their life. They're not part of mine. Well, I'll move on. You know, that is one thing we agree on. <clears throat> But, um, <laughs> ah, it is what it is. There is a reason that we moved clear across the country. I know a lot of our friends back in Wyoming were like, wow, why are you moving so far away? There's a reason. There's mm -hmm. a reason. Thank goodness we're not, we were not still there. You know, there were a lot of reasons why. But a lot of them was family issues and stuff. It's like, you're going to either save yourself or you're going to live a life in misery. And we all make that choice. You can't sit there and say that you just never could have, have moved. Because you can. And sometimes, if nobody else is going to save you, you have to save yourself. You absolutely have to save yourself. <clears throat> it's not an easy thing. You're going to get some backlash and stuff. But, you know... You do what you have to do. Were we going to sit in a house in Wyoming and be miserable for the rest of our life? Or were we going to take that chance? Lord knows how we made it clear across the country. That was an adventure. If you guys have followed me when I was doing that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but 
<laughs> you know, we made it, and then we get to, to Florida, and the area we picked was like, it was not anything like what the website showed, and it's like, wow. And there were times we took the wrong road, and we heard the Deliverance song, seriously. We moved there, we thought we were going to be viewed so rednecked, and, and stuff, oh no. <laughs> no. There's some good people that lived in that area, though, and we yeah. have some good memories. Sadly, some, you know, a few of the friends that we, we absolutely adore the most, they passed on, and, you know, um, but I cherish the time I got to spend with my friend Sheila. She really helped me so much. We were new to the area, being kind of scared. She lived right next door, and... Um, we talked every day through text. I know it sounds funny. Um, and uh, it really helped. It made me feel not near as alone when her and her husband would be there in the evening because Brad had, had to go back to work and was working evenings. Um, so, you know, it made me feel very sad how fast she went and stuff. Um, and, you know, because we had lots of plans that we were going to do. Lots of plans that she and I were going to do. Lots of plans that we all had as a couple. When Brad caught that great big uh, drum uh, fish that was, he went had gone with her husband. Uh, you know, so, um, I mean, you know, he'd just be kind of like, you want to go fishing? And, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. off they go. So, you know, and then our friend Carl that lived on the other side of us. And, I mean, Carl was kind of scary looking. If you didn't know him, super nice guy. Super nice guy. And he always would tease that he was getting his exercise, he'd get in a golf cart. Yeah. And, you know, and, um, you know, uh, I would bake something in the toaster oven and I'd have Brad take over. I remember one time it was like a lemon blueberry uh, cake and he was... He was very happy. Yes, he was. He was he was the nicest guy, and it, when if he liked you, he liked you, and he would bend over backwards for yep. you. And um, you know, so I mean, we were blessed to really meet some very cool people, like we the were. Peanut Man. He passed on too. There were a lot of people that passed on just all all suddenly. You know, there was an individual that had moved into the campground there that was staying in a little travel trailer that uh, had committed suicide. And that was kind of sad to mm -hmm. to learn that. And just his, his mother and, and, and sister were there trying to pick up his vehicle and stuff. And it's, you know, that hits home. Met some cool people like, um, what was that, Project Wounded Warrior? Oh, yeah, the Wounded Warrior Project. W Wounded yeah. Warrior, we, we met a bicyclist who had biked all the way clear across the country. And uh, we were sitting outside, and he wanted to kind of interview with us. So we said, sure. And then after he got done with his short little interview with us, um, then we all sat and talked. Really, very, very cool project and person, you know. Yeah, he and, was. You know that was that was pretty cool. We also we all survived a couple hurricanes on, in the in the RV park. The second hurricane, we went up. And we were blessed enough to go up and meet uh, my friend Joel and her husband Bob. Spent you know three four days up there. They were so gracious to to welcome us into their home. Not only us, but our animals as well. I mean, we have some big dogs. <clears throat> you know, and then we had at that time little Missy Mama was still alive and stuff. And then I told this before, but my friend Joe is terrified of cats. Well, we had Angel in a carrier. They even let her, said let her out. Remember? Mm -hmm. And I mean it was just amazing. And I will always cherish that because sadly Bob was uh, killed very tragically in a car wreck, which was of no fault of his. Um, and, you know, there again, we had lots of plans as a couple and everything. Um, so time is always very precious life and stuff. You need to seize the moments that you can. Don't put stuff off. 
So many people put stuff off. We used to put stuff off. Thinking we had all the time in the world. Then when you were, were struggling so much for, with his mobility, we thought we missed every chance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And yeah, he still has got an immense amount of back pain. That's what he notices the most now. He's got some issues with his right knee. He wears a brace for that. Um, but uh, like today is a high pain day for him. But um, life is all about healing. When I have somebody in my family that passes on, I like to do something that um, is kind of a positive life thing, you know, whether it's going for a drive or maybe taking. I remember when, when my grandfather was so sick, remember? We got over to visit him and stuff, and then after we left, I told you I wanted to take our dog, Pat, who was a big black dog, and I want he loved the river and stuff. I wanted to take him on, on a walk because that's what life is all about. Yep. And so we did that. You know, I kind of had in my own private little almost memorial service, uh, you know, with the good and the bad of my dad. You know, I will say frankly that, well, I'm not even going to go there with that, but the good and the bad. And I have some good memories too. And one of those memories is Bye Bye American Pie. I remember since the time I was little singing that because <clears throat> he loved that song. He would crank that up. And I still always remember, you know. So that was kind of a tribute to him and, and everything. And, you know, you love and you let go. I'm not going to fight with these people. They, you know, no, of course, no, I didn't hear from my mother, and I'm not going to bother her. But my mother hasn't been in, in great health. She has, has got a pulmonary hypertension or something like that, um, and she's on oxygen. So I'm not going to go and bother her, you know. And, uh, but, you know, my brother said what he had to say, and that's fine. He has that right. And I have the right to feel the way I do, and I won't play those games, you know. And I don't care about being in a will or not being in a will, you know. If that's that important to you, then go for it. I'm not going to go and do that, you know, just the way I am. I'm not really that great with, I've never been <coughs> money hungry. Probably would have been better for me if I had been. You know, I mean, but I just, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, that's why I, I picked a man for his character, not for what he was making. You know, I mean, <laughs> I picked a man, too, that I knew had steady employment and wasn't going to just come home and announce me someday that he, you know, quit his job or mm -hmm. was fired. You know, and um, that's why he gets a monthly pension. That's why we locked, we walked those, those, uh, it wasn't a strike. Ticket lines. Ticket lines and stuff. I mean, but, um, you know, we've had a good, good time and, and we're going to carry on. I think that's all kind of about the mat maturity and stuff. It, it, I, you look at it, I think, too, when you start losing parents and you think of whatever their age is. And you're like, so I I'm, I have approximately probably maybe 20 years left, hopefully longer. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste. I want to live and, and be as productive and be as happy as I can be. Because I see too many people that are miserable. And that's basically the case with, with my parents. And this is my opinion and mine only. But they were both very miserable. Misery loves company. And, you know. Uh, but that's the choice they made. And I'm making a choice that I want to be happy. I want to produce some really great artwork. I want to build up a small business of painting, you know, miniatures and earthworks and stuff. That would be a nice little income. Um, you know, I'm thinking about doing some sewing, but I want to really produce some really good 
paintings and stuff. And I think we've always been talking about probably time for us to start doing some wills and stuff. Um, because I want to make sure that if it was just me left, that, or when, say, I pass away and then Brad, is those, I want those paintings to be sold at an auction. And then the proceeds given to a, and I'll have to find it, like a no-kill shelter or maybe a spay and neuter clinic. I think that's a great program, too. The program where they go give the greatly reduced um, shots for, for dogs and cats, the immunization, something like that. And that way, the paintings aren't just thrown away. Um, you know, I don't care what they sell them for. Because, you know, if it helped buy a can of cat food or it helped buy, you know, a, a, a dog to be spayed, great. So, um, you know, and we need to put in, in there because we would have to have somebody advocate for us in case that we could not. So it just needs to be a certain agency because we don't have anybody else that we could, you know, really expect to advocate for us. We have a couple family members that we really greatly love um, that are younger, but I don't know if that's, re that's really a very big burden. Especially when they live clear across the country. Yeah. You know, and I really don't know if I want to do that to them. I mean, you know, then they would worry about if they were making the right decision and stuff. So leave it to some professional, some caring, honest professionals that, you know, there's things to think about. Yep. There's definitely things to think about. They eat the cats up there eating again. Yep. I think she ate almost that whole can of salmon. She did. She, she was just inhaling that this morning. I gave that to her and she just, you know, because we woke up and, like I said, we had ordered the dog food and stuff. So we had a lot of stuff sitting on the porch and down on the lower step. I went out to help Brad because, you know, it was a lot of stuff. And, but I had to feed her first. She was just, I mean, she would have eaten it out of the can. I was like, let me shake it out. <laughs> But yeah, she's up there eating it again. She'll come up if you have a yogurt or anything. She wants to lick out the bowl. We just give her whatever she wants at this point in time. You know. But she's still eating and drinking good and everything. You yeah. know. Like I said, she's always on my bed when I go to bed at night. She's always been a thin cat, too, though. Yeah. I mean, she's always. She's yeah. never been heavy at all. Uh-uh. When we've had some heavy, we've had some chunky cats. We have. <laughs> we had this one cat named Scanner, and she <laughs> was she was an orange cat, orange with white stripes, and she reminded me a lot of Garfield. And she would sit and bust her little heart. She would sit and her stomach and stuff would fold over on her back legs, so you didn't you couldn't see him at all. And that's how we knew that something had happened to her because she didn't show up for mealtime. So she loved her canned cat food and stuff. You know, her food was very important to her. And, you know, she had passed away and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, she was, she was probably our heaviest. I think so. Yeah. I mean, Misty was a little chunky, chunky, or yeah. Misty. Misty. And, um, but then as she got older, she lost weight. But, yeah, yeah Scanner was... Yeah, it was so funny, though. It was cute, you know. And, yeah. like I said, I had the cats in the, in the both in the same carrier. And, you know, uh, going on a trip. And she had, Tigger was a Maine Coon. Now, he was a little bit smaller of a Maine Coon because he <laughs> didn't have good nutrition until he found us on a cold, rainy night. But... She would smush him up against the corner of that carrier, and his little face would be smushed up, and he'd be crying and stuff. And here she is; she's got the rest of the carrier, and she's just all sprawled out, like, "Yeah, whatever," you know. That was always funny. Yeah. You know, but yeah, we've had a lot of really wonderful animals. Mm -hmm. I love my animals. My animals bring me a lot of comfort. When I was so upset Friday, first first was Charlie. Just all over me, giving me kisses and stuff. Just sticking so super close. Then, of course, my dog, Jelly, our dog. 
and she she was sticking super close. Then Nixie was coming around, and they would like that all day. This is about the first day Jelly hasn't just be, been on me almost constantly. Yeah, well, you see where she's laying now. Yeah. <laughs> on the plushest spot in the room. Yeah, she's laying on the pillow on the couch. But, um, yeah, they they all really gave me so much comfort and stuff. Because you can think the whole world is falling around you and that nobody in the whole world likes you. And if you still have your pet and they look at you with so much love and stuff and it's like, okay. You're right. I'm not just worthless or anything because look at how much this animal loves me. We're so blessed to have animals and it's it's an honor really to be able to care for them and give them a nice life. I feel that way. I know you do too. Mm -hmm. And Brad is even more, Brad's always been attached to animals, but he's even more so now that he doesn't work because he gets to spend so much more time with them. You said that not too long ago, that this really was the first time we were talking about Jelly Bean, really the first time that he's gotten to just spend a lot of time with the animal, you know, so, you know, they become such a big part of your life, I mean, you know. Yeah. You saw last night, when I was get, finally getting ready to go to sleep, and, and, and we had been talking, and I got so sleepy, uh, I took, taken some melatonin, and, um... I called Jelly Bean up. She was laying on the floor, and she knows right where to lay up by my head and cuddle up. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and with me, every morning, I or almost every morning, there is a certain butthead that likes to wake me up bright and early. But then um, the Nixie, she, you know, she's always laying right there and I'll brush my hand against her, you know, when I'm rolling over something and she just ex explodes yeah. in happiness. When they try, like, what he talked about is Charlie loves to, now see, I'm in the, my room, which is where Charlie lays, sleeps, I'm not sitting up and I'm awake, but he doesn't come get me, he doesn't even notify me at all, he'll go down the hall, stick his head in Brad's room, and bark. We got that kind of this bark howl. So once Brad peels himself off the ceiling <laughs> and s says a few explicit things to Charlie about this, <laughs> and I was sitting back this morning and I heard him do it, and I was, I was giggling because I knew, and I'm like, I just talked with Charlie. I was just petting him and loving him up. Did he bother to let me know he'd like to go outside? Oh, no. I guess they see that as Brad's sole job now is to let them out and to feed them. You know. So you're in charge of feeding us all, basically. Mm -hmm. Can we rearrange that? Because, see, okay. This is going to be a long video. Sorry, guys. But I was supposed to be cooking some meals. And we make out the menu. And then it comes my turn to cook, and he's like, so are you cooking tonight or am I? And I'm like, well, you, and I, you know, I will come up with some excuse. I just don't want to mess with it. So Brad's got kitchen duty and and dishes, and then I'm going to do the rest of the house. So. Yeah, and then starting tomorrow, I want to work in the, the blue room. I mean, normally on Saturdays, we want to go in the blue room together and work. I did not do that yesterday, of course, but... You know, that's what we're going to start. Because we want to get that area secured. Yeah. I want to get Brad's room set up better. I want to make him some curtains for his window and stuff. And I really am wondering if the bedroom window is wider than this front room window. Yeah, I like to. Yeah. Are Sorry. you going to be okay there? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. What I'm going to do is take... We never use our top sheet. So, there's this kind of like a metallic gray... A metal gray um, that I was gonna use that for to make him curtains I think it'll be really great right yeah you were blowing out that he's, he's vaping he was blowing out the vape and then you sucked air back in and part of it went back in huh. you know but so that's what we got going on I need to go take water pills Need to do a little picking up my room. I'd like to do some painting. But I can try and stay awake. <laughs> but you've been moving. He's, we now have 10 cases of dog food. 
that will last them, so that's 120 cans. That will last them four months, give or take a little bit. So, um, you know, the babies will be taken care of. They are fine. I hear the cat down the hall. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, she's still coming up, loving us all up and, and all that. So, you know, take each day. Well, God, I'm so sorry. It, um, there's on occasion, uh, she has to, she has problems getting up on my bed. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have to get, I'll have to get down and lift her up and mm -hmm. everything. And see, my, um, my pedestal that my bed sits on is uh, 18 inches high. Well, some people call it a frame. I don't call it a pedestal. A pedestal? Okay. The pedestal, the throne upon which Brad's mattress is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, that bed sits really, really high. And, uh, um, you know, when Angel was much, much younger, she could jump from the ground to the top of the fridge without even breaking a sweat. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many times I'd be working in the kitchen and she would jump from the ground up to my shoulder yep. and then use me as a step ladder to get up on top of the fridge. Oh and, God, uh, yeah, we used to find her in the most crazy places. And we're like, how did you get up there? Of course, you know, then they want to cry because they can't, they think they can get down. Yeah. You know they can, but they, it's a game. Yeah. Are you ready to do your, your little editorial? Um, no, I haven't made any notes. Oh, because I was just going to turn the camera to you. Okay, well. Can you wing it? I can wing it. Okay, cool. Brad wanted to see if you think so now. Let me know when you're in, in view. There I am. Okay. Um, yeah, one of the things that I wanted to say is I appreciate so much um everybody's um love and support and like Teresa said the outpouring of of well wishes and everything i mean that has just been so wonderful um we have both of us are fairly ostracized from from each of our families and when we got together both of us were discussing which which side of the family we thought was more effed up, if it was hers or mine, or and they're both really, really effed up. Yeah, but up. I win now. <laughs> ding, 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 yep, ding. good, good <laughs> call. I'm a wiener. Yeah. You know, and, and um, yeah, there's a lot of, there was a lot of things that happened, and originally I thought about going into it, but I'm going to wait, wait for a later date on that, because uh, um, it's just, the the pain is too fresh and yeah. uh um uh, i don't yeah anymore i i don't it was very painful now i'm over it yeah you know and i don't i don't want to i don't want to start anything because Not i know it. i know if i said anything that that there would be threats of a lawsuit. And I will say something at some point in time, but I'm not going to right now. Yeah. I may even write a book about yeah. some stuff. I think that'd be cool. You know? Yeah. But um, one of the things I was wanting to say is we are finding out there are more and more people out there with... Um, similar stories, yeah. Similar stories, which, you know, families are in some instances, even more jacked up than ours. You know, I'm, I'm sorry for anybody that's going through that kind yeah. of pain. It yeah. does help to know you're not alone. Yeah, nobody should have to go through that. But, you know, um, maybe being um, a little more open with with your friends about what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's that's one of the things that's helped us is just seeing you know, how, how, uh, being able to talk about how royally screwed up the families mm -hmm. are, you know? So, uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to let everybody know that how much I've appreciated your support with Teresa and, you know, and I, I try to be there as much as I can, but, but, um, you know, if I was there 24 seven for her, she would probably have to choke the life out of me because I know, <laughs> I know I can have a tendency to drive her crazy. So, so. You don't have to speed it up. You like going on more speed. I can't help it. You know. Yeah, but I took. Yeah, but you know it's. Well, just, I your friends are kind of like to me a recipe and soup. Yeah. Or stew. 
-hmm. If you're just going to use one ingredient. Yeah. But when you have a wonderful mix of friends, with who mm -hmm. I call family, yeah, it makes the most delicious super stew. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and we are um, we are more caught up and involved with some of the people we've met online than with our own families. Oh sure. You know, and uh, you know, one of the nice things is is with the people online, it's very easy to to keep a relationship up. You know, because you're not having to worry about going out to their, going over to their house or if they're on the no, other I side. No, I wish I could, though. Oh, yeah, you know. we do. And, but, you know, my friend Joe sent me this thing, and it was an Oprah um, broadcast. But it was this guy that said, you know, you want your family to be a certain way, but they were broken when you got them. Yeah. And that really resoned with me. Mm -hmm. They were broken when you got them. It's like, yep. that's so true. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. you know, things like this make you stronger, too. Mm -hmm. Everything's a, a lesson. Yeah. You know, and that's why, you know, as much as I love the state of Wyoming, um, it, it's it's something that there was a lot of people out there that we had to get away from, you know, because they were, they were not good for us. My thing is, is if you're in a family and maybe people don't agree with your choices or how you are, that doesn't mean that they can pick a, when it's a death of a family member to ostracize you. Mm -hmm. That to me is petty and it should never happen. Yeah. I mean, you need to put your differences aside provide them with the information and then you know you did the right thing and you go about your life yep. you know you don't have to be all warm and gooey or any of that but you know the right thing is to notify them or have somebody notify them yeah you know there's been cases where you know, family member doesn't want to talk to another one and the funeral home will notify them, you know or an executor of a will or whatever but, uh, you know, that's not the time and place. Yeah. I don't care how I feel about a family member. If it's somebody in the family that has passed away, I'm going to let them know. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they do whatever they want with that information. Yep. But it, we've seen families fighting where siblings are fighting, and they totally forget the most important thing. And it, it's like... You may hit, you may hate your sibling, but that still is their parent too, you know? So, yep. it's still their parent or maybe your brother or whoever, yeah. you know? It's, the, it's not the time or place. Yeah, and it is, it's really disturbing how uh, some people that they try to act like that, you know, oh yes, we're one big loving family until the money issue comes into play, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, Oh, the, what do they say? The greed. Yeah. You know, that's a powerful thing. Yep. Wars are made from it and yep. everything else. I mean, yep. you know, I will never fight anybody for any, to get yep. anything out of, out of a family, uh, you know, inheritance or anything. If it, if you need it, if that's that important to you, you obviously need it more than I do. So, yep. you know, you can yeah. have it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And there was a couple of things that, you know, a couple of things of, I, of my mom's I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I got one of the things and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's pretty much it. And, and, you know, uh, the others we did by similar, just kind of as a remembrance. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, they can't take the memory. No. Your family can do whatever they want to do. They cannot take your memory. Yep. And that's one thing to, to remember. If somebody acts like they just don't want you around in their family, and um, but they can't take your memories. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line to me is they know the truth, and you know the truth. And so does, if you believe in the higher power, so does your higher power. You know, and that will eat at them in the middle of the night. They may never show it, but you know the truth, and so do they. Mm -hmm. You know, they can say whatever they want to say. Yep. You know, and that's, you know, with me, you know, uh, my sibling, my brother knows the truth. 
He can say whatever he wants, but he knows deep down the truth, and so do we. But it's not worth it to me to fight with him. No. It's not. It, me fighting with him, will it change how he is? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. So lead your life, and I'll lead mine. Yeah. You know, we'll keep doing ours. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that you and I have talked about so many times. When we first got together, we had opportunity. Mm hmm to to do become a lot better off financially oh, than sure. we have yeah you know but there were sacrifices that we were not willing right. to make you know um i will say uh that's one of the things one of the things i learned from the, <laughs> the leroy you see him in there yeah oh yeah that's one of the things i learned from the leroy is I learned what not to do as a father. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's a good point too. Yeah, you learn, you learn through this what not to do, what yep. not to be like. Yep. We yep. all have those choices as we mature as into adults on how we're going to treat other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say I, I haven't always. Yeah. You know, and it's a learning experience, especially when you're not taught. The general coping skills and stuff, you know, uh -huh. how to how to be with people. Yeah. But um Yeah. Damn sure better than that. Yeah. So Are you think so, Charlie? Is that all you had to say? Yeah, Is that all that you had okay. Sorry. I need to kinda of wrap this up. I thought you were talking to Charlie. No. So anyway, that's a that's kind of our viewpoint. I'm good. You know, yeah, I'm still kinda of processing some stuff, but I'm getting you know, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm not super depressed or anything. I'm not, you know. So I kind of worried about that. I had even made mentioned to Brad Friday that I might need to see somebody to get over this. But I'm very very self aware of my mental health. I mean, if you have mental health issues, you learn to of your own warning sign. You learn that maybe you're spiraling down and you need to reach out. You know. So, but I just don't feel like I need to talk to a therapist, talk everything to death. Yeah. I talked to Brad, I talked to my close friends, so, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I love you guys, and I hope you're having a good Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting us prattle on. Um, you know, Brad's resting up from moving the dog food. I, I helped get it in the house yeah. and stuff, but my arm is... is a delicate flower today it is getting better I'm able to move a little bit better I use that massager when it really tenses out stuff so anything else mm -hmm. all right well I love you guys and I do cherish your friendship so very much I will be it's gonna probably take me a little bit but I will be responding to everybody um, and um, remember do something nice for somebody else and then do something nice for yourself Yep. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.